Hello. What's going? Oh, you guys can't. I got to turn you on. There. Hola. There they are. Hola. There they are. Uh oh, I heard sound over here. We don't want. Here we go. We don't want that. On the road again. You don't want to hear Zormir in stereo. No. Uh -oh. All right. Hey, guys. Hey, it's almost like we've done this before. Hello. Yeah. And welcome. Oh, well, where'd you come from? What? Who? Why? Yeah. Um, yeah. Welcome. Welcome back to the dungeon. Um, yeah, we missed, uh, we missed last week. We just, after our in-person session, which was amazing, we, um, we just schedules didn't line up. We had a lot of stuff going on, real life kicking everybody in the rear end. Um, so didn't play last week, played some other games, played some new world, played some Phasmo, still producing content for, for all of you. And we love you for it. Um, a quick note, and we'll say it again at the end. 
Uh, we won't be here next week. I'm on travel. I'm not able to lug uh, 80 pounds of equipment with me into a hotel room and rely on hotel internet to um, give us a, a satisfactory connection there. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We can't be with you next week, but we'll be with you uh, the next one. So uh, we'll miss you. Got some new things tonight. So um, we may have a little hiccups, but hopefully we don't have any. So glad to be here with you. You you may notice, hey Tricky, you may notice on the uh, the map it's a little hey, different. Um, one, it's now scalable, so we can move in and out. But uh, the shield marker on here now is showing you where the party is. So Ooh. I can we can now see the party move through Drakenvald there. So if you ever wondered where are they at, now we can we got some, and we'll change that icon. It won't be a shield, but that's what I had on hand. Uh, with the time I had. So a couple quick things before we get started. The first one, we wanted to remind you, um, we do have some new merch. Uh, the first one here, uh, this is one of our new ones uh, right there on your screen. So this was designed by Grayson. Uh, Mike, Mike drew it. Uh, I did some coloring, but he did all the hard work. And uh, those are available now from our merch store. So if you want to support us and, and kind of show the colors we have those available so enjoy that look at that that it just came right up right there good job uh, jeremy took care of that thanks and that's the new one looks great on the coffee cup and the second one um i love this one uh, is our worst thief ever also drawn by uh mike and colored by myself uh but that's that's the other one for our infamous rogue zormir and i think blaylock just got here oh no, we just no, lost Mike. Grayson went away. Oh, we lost. See? See? Oh, I just saw the cameras mess up, so I didn't know what it was. Well, that's why we keep him in the last slot. Because <laughs> he'll <laughs> pop back in here in a minute. So, But worst thief ever, uh, that's that's one of our, our shirts there. And then he'll, he'll come back in a moment. Blaylock should be with us in a bit. He's got a busy schedule this week, but... Um, we are going to continue on. Everyone is excited to see what is going to happen. <sighs> so, see, Grayson's right back with us. Uh, and hopefully, Arlo, your uh, sound issues stay under control. So, check, check. How are they doing right now? It's, it's going to be iffy. Okay. Tell my sister to stop Check. watching Netflix. Um... <laughs> Feed the squirrels. <laughs> King Cuddles. He needs star metal tools. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Tricky. Uh, thank you for that. Um, appreciate you getting some of the, the merch there and representing the uh, this little venture we got. So speaking of ventures, let's start the adventure. Um Let's get something going here, and then we'll hop right in. Mike, are you having issues with your video camera still? He's gone. Oh, he's gone again. I wonder how many swear words are, are filling the halls of his I'm home right now. Uh -huh. <laughs> Only about 6,000. <laughs> He'll come back to us. He'll come back to us. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Ooh. Oh. Now he's in Galtier's spot. Why on the wall? Galtier, why'd you shut your camera off? I I didn't, did I? Yeah. You did. Oh, I did. My bad. All right. Yeah, there you go. Oh. Yeah. This is this is how we're gonna be tonight. You guys fix it. I told I'm you, gonna... man. My five G just disappears like it was never there. Huh? I don't All know right. What the fuck is going on with my internet? Okay. Oh my god. Sorry, sorry Grayson. Turn. turn yours off. <laughs> Carlson, turn yours on. <laughs> Let's try this a fifth time. You think this is our first day on the job? You, you would, would think. Too. All right, Grayson, you're good. Sure, I mean, I'm last and everything, so I don't know why things are screwing up. I know. Uh, I know. Carlson shut his camera off for some reason. After I shut mine. Turn off. off. All right. Oh, but you're after me. Never mind. Well, here we are. Uh, as the party arrived and traveled from Portstown, 
Wow, that is a lot of sound there. Um, let's. Oh no, Rob. <laughs> Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Rob froze up. Yep. Mm -hmm. I off to a great start. It is. It is. It's just the internet in general. Facebook's been down all day. Um, and WhatsApp and Instagram. I'm glad I use Signal because it works. Um, mm -hmm. And more secure. Anyways, the party left Portstown after it was attacked by mechanical beings sent there by Broman Karth himself. Uh, they talked to Kayleen there to acquire a legend on how to remove the spirit of Quelidon from Zormir. Taking up their things, they traveled past the Swamp of Lost Hope, through the woods where they almost lost Arlo as he was knocked off the... Uh, Talsahin and combat with a couple of trolls in the forest ensued. They defeated the trolls and struggled their way down to the Black Wall where they ran into an old friend, Captain Fitzgerald. They spoke of her and of loss and what had happened and their debts that were owed for the care of their horses they left there many months ago. And Blaylock returned the signet and the pistol of her lost brother to her. And as they got up from the table to head back to his quarters, that's where we leave the party tonight. So, begin. Hmm. I was heading to Captain Fitzgerald's brother's room. Yes. He is not his so you were heading back and Arlo what were you doing I don't remember <laughs> that was like so two weeks ago I think I was just with them listening okay uh, we just guys we probably ought to see what we can't do about getting some defenses for the town Captain Fitzgerald so short-handed. Or maybe go see where the attacks are coming from and squash it. Well, Fort hasn't been able to squash it. I don't know if we're going to just be able to squash it like that. Well, they don't have enough people to go and scout. Maybe that's something we can do. take a walk along the perimeter. This is afternoon, right? Yeah. Yep. And it's evening. More more toward evening than afternoon. Okay. We could see what they're default. Grayson's off reading a book with her with the lady who brought us here. I think they were going to show us the room, right? Uh, Blaylock and Zoromir know where the quarters are. Zoromir, where are the quarters at? Uh, over there. Use your eyes. You're the one who's been here before, not me. And I'll go where you point you to. You see some comfortable quarters that were probably once occupied by soldiers from the Black Wall. Are they uh, like personal little quarters that close off or just like a room of... Or just bed. room room of beds. Yeah, nothing mm -hmm. personal. Okay. I'm go I want to go uh, sit down on bed and read the, the book I have. Okay. So... How long? I'll do that. Uh, I'll do that for like four hours and then I'll work on the infuser after that. Okay. All right. You learn uh, about the right of the roar. And I'll send that to you. 
Okay. And then I, I did nothing on the uh, the infuser. I rolled a nat okay. one. You... <laughs> it breaks. I hope you, not. <laughs> you struggle focusing on the infuser to get uh, anything accomplished. Zormir, what are you doing? Quick stay, Arlo. Should we head up, take a walk around the front of this place and see how bad it really is? I think we should. I don't I got an uneasy feeling about this place. It's just not very defensible, and I just have the feeling the minute we lay our head down, we're we're going to be right in the middle of the thick of it. Oh, we're going to go walk. Okay. So you guys get up and walk toward the entrance or the exit that uh, Zoramir. You remember where it's at because you went into the desert before, so you're heading that way. Um, Grayson, you follow Captain Fitzgerald into a back quarter and she kind of sighs as she stares at the door and pulls a small key out of her pocket, twisting it into the lock. And she gives you a look as she slowly opens it and walks inside. You see uh, a disheveled bed of uh, some, some wool and different things. Papers are scattered all about. You see a map of Dragonfold on the on the wall. Uh, it seems like some pretty serious study had gone on here. Here's his things. You may not think so, Captain, but I might find something in here useful. Your brother died not doing a fool's errand. He may have done it foolishly and by himself, but... If I can gleam even a hint of where the last pieces are, and we can get this sword back together, things might go differently on this island. I wish they'd start. Seems like all we hear is trouble. Sometimes I wonder if it would be better to pass the way he did. Glory of battle. There's always that chance. What what resources do you have still left at this? We have a small battalion of men. We have archers. We have spearmen, knights. Uh, we're not without our options. Uh, even a major two among the group. I would suggest getting a list of everything to Blaylock and Galtia. Maybe we can come up with some sort of game plan. How often are the attacks happening? Random. We can find no pattern. Yet they all come from the same place. They just appear. It's like they, they're they birthed of sand. We have encountered them using creatures to burrow tunnels that armies are released from. We need to seriously scout the area see what we can find but at least knowing what we have to work with here maybe we can make this place a little more defendable you're welcome to do what you must within our means in the journal she steps forward and kind of brushes some papers to the side and pulls out a, a fair size uh, journal, kind of knocks some things off of it and hands it over to you and unbinds it. Uh, it's got a, like a leather strap, two leather straps that go over the cover and she unbinds each side of it and kind of opens it up and thumbs through the pages herself a little bit and then closes it and hands it to you. You 
do not mind me staying in this room for a short period of time while I study. Place is yours, as I said. I have more pressing matters than to mourn the loss of someone I've already mourned. And she nods at you and steps out past you through the doorway and heads into the black wall. I'm going to start reading through the journal and looking at like all the notes and stuff he has up on the walls. Okay. So I guess I'll investigate. All right. Roll it up. Woo-hoo, first one tonight. <laughs> no whammies. Investigation plus two, so 16. Some of that Rex energy right there. Um. <laughs> I'm not stupid. Sure <laughs> <laughs> you so, are, buddy. Sure you are. You open, <laughs> you open the book, and you start looking through notes. And a lot of this looks familiar to you as you thumb through uh, of other notes you've looked at in the past. It seems that uh, he was definitely on the right track. It has locations of pieces of the shard. Uh, you see a reference to the Dead Spokes, Castle Verminia, Lake Golden Spain, the Scarviard Desert. It mentions the original collaboration of Dwarvish and Elvish make uh, of the sword itself, and, and the Greybeard and Evercatch bloodlines that forged that sword. As they forged it, it was not of normal means. You, you're aware of typical blacksmithing. Um, after it was assembled by the two uh, families, they used the breath of an adult red dragon uh, that was captured to forge the blade, and they tempered it with the breath from an adult white dragon because the blade needed to be cooled quickly. It was then taken to be blessed by priests before it was uh, given out. Um, the book contains several scribbles of various locations and pictures and the last entry you read says the peace must be in the desert deep underground I seek to find it though I will be exiled for leaving alright while you're reading that uh, Arlo and Zormir, you head outside and scout around. Uh, give me a uh, perception as night falls. That's you say. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah. I wrote pretty bad. 21. Only 21. 23. All right. Uh, you look out upon the, the vast desert sands. Arlo, this is very foreign to you as you're looking out and seeing just hill after hill of sand and the, the wind gently blowing across it, kicking up small dust devils across the, the terrain. Uh, you don't see anything uh, specific. The, the walls here are built very well. Um, looking around... They're, they've taken some damage over the attacks, but they're still holding well. There's not chips or cracks in the stone. It doesn't look like they've used any sort of um, large uh, incendiary equipment like catapults or trebuchets or anything like that to for the assault. Uh, walking around, you see nothing that would lead you to believe uh, any tunneling or anything had gone on. Uh, and footprints are always gone here because they uh, the the breeze across the sands I don't know who would love to live in the sand this is so boring oh it's coarse and irritating it gets everywhere yeah you think these you think these attacks are coming from the oasis uh, I mean, maybe. The Oasis... 
been a while, but it, it, it's just a little bit of water. I don't see anything crazy there. I don't know where they'd be coming from. I, yeah, this is really where we're going to need to talk with some of the men and see what kind of defenses they're using. Um, there's just, they just don't have enough people. We see I don't know how many people, I don't know how many, did they say how many people are attacking? How many, how many attackers they have at a time? Did they? You tell me. Um, do we see any signs of battle or anything? There's not much. Um, every now and then the sands will uncover uh, the skull of, of various things that have been attacked there. But nothing. Uh, there's not like swords or spears or things lying out. It's hard to tell because the sands shift so much. I'm going to butts around along the wall and find a little rock, nothing big, maybe like a inch or so in diameter. Just kind of chuck it over the wall. Okay. Just pick it up and throw it up there and you hear it just plink, 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 plink on the other side. There's nothing out there. I don't know what these people are talking about. I don't know. This is very odd. Very odd. Let's walk around the other side. See what we can see over there. See how much damage is done to that side, too. There's no soldiers walking around outside, correct? No, they're walking along the tops of the walls and in the guard towers on the corners. Okay. Yeah, yeah we're going to go ahead and Maybe we'll walk around to the southeast side there. Okay. You walk around to the southeast side. There's You run into the wall there that connects with the fort and blocks off the desert from the plains on the other side. I think we've got a bunch of men up here with bows and arrows. So we could probably hold off a good in rush of enemies from up here. Well, I think that we also need to see if they have any casters. We need to put some casters on this wall. We'll have to, yes. we'll have to talk to Captain about that. You know more than me about that. I'll leave that to you. Well, I believe I have seen enough. I think we should head inside before it gets too much darker. The moon begins to rise in the horizon as uh, you see just the dark and shadowy dunes blowing in the distance. It's actually quite nice. And the breeze feels nice uh, as the desert cools in the evening. You step back inside. Um, so you guys, Blaylock is going to be with you guys, uh, for the time being and Grayson, you finish. So reading through the notes, it's now late into the evening. So, <clears throat> okay. So I know that they got, they got the first shard from the desert in, in my reading. Do I realize that there's a second shard out here? Is that what we're... You just know what you read. Uh, am I getting... And cross -refer referencing map locations, there's nothing different from what from where we've already gotten the shards at. Um, I can reread off the locations that were written in the book. Well, so I knew it was the desert, the castle, the dead spokes. We got Dead Spokes, Castle Verminia, Lake Goldensbane, and the Scarveyard Desert. Goldensbane. 
and that's not the location of the Black Tower, is it? Lake's Golden Bane is right there. Black Tower is up here. You just headed to bed then? Uh, yeah, once I've got done reading with everything, I'll lock the place back up, put everything back where I found it. Okay. You step out, it's grown quiet here. There's not a lot of noise coming from the tavern. You see Arlo, Zormir, and Blaylock and returning from uh, somewhere. Did you get a lay of the land? Desert, yes. desert and more desert. Guess we have the, a good vantage point up there. Well, it seems that the attacks are coming from different locations every time. They are Sounds more like the tunnels that we encountered up north. Different, different locations and different sizes. Interesting. Of the fort. Well, that's why they can't follow back. Whatever's burrowing underneath the ground is closing up. One minute they're there, the next minute they're gone. Should we, try and, too much. should we try and draw them out? How are we supposed to even attack them? <clears throat> we'll have to figure something out. If we're not careful enough, they'll be tunneling inside the black wall. Well, hopefully we can help with their defenses. We have some knights They've got pikemen, a couple of mages. Maybe we can see about going out and since the desert leaves no marks, no trails, maybe we can get some trenches dug, get some of the extra pikes placed in the ground. If we can't see very far in the sand, hopefully they can't either. This is probably their natural territory. We may have a slight advantage here. Yeah. The wall's looking to be in pretty good shape. We may have to suggest to have one mage on duty at all times. Them rotate out every day. Yeah, we they are hard pressed, that's for sure. Well, when you're trying to defend against an enemy that you don't know what you can't get see. Some sleep. Right. That's that's the worst of it. Hopefully with a little luck. Zoma, here's a current representative of the thieves. He sets off enough traps, maybe he can set some. <laughs> Known to set some good traps that kept us alive during some of our restful nights. I believe I know where the last hidden piece of the shot is, but I'm going to ask few more questions before we decide to head in that direction. Sounds like a plan. Sounds like we should get some rest before we get started tomorrow. Get a little bit of sleep. I'm going right. to head to the barracks. Alright. You head, you see... Uh, Galtier in there, kind of leaning against the wall, a book open in his lap, and he's kind of fallen asleep uh, with some 
strange device in his lap and as you walk in the rest of you go in anyone doing anything before you rest I'm going to meditate okay 17 That's success. Yeah. You got here. What's that? I'm gonna sit down with Galtier. Okay. As you sit down beside him, Galtier, you kind of wake up and see Grayson sitting there. Well, Grayson, what'd you find out? Well, seems that. The last missing shard might be in the area of Lake Golden's Bane. I'm not too familiar with that area. So I'll have to ask around. But as our predicament here, we could definitely use them as allies. So if we could help them stop these attacks, might benefit us. Sounds Captain logical. Fitzgerald was saying that it seems the attacks are random enough that they're coming from the ground. They can't be seen and then they disappear without a trace. I Sounds know some lot. things about the burrowed creatures and monsters that they were using. We saw that up north. Do you have any other information being a monster hunter? The only things I know that dig in the ground were either, was either that worm that we found coming outside of the tunnel after that orc stronghold or possibly those machines that Kraft built. We don't know what all those things are capable of yet. As to what lives in the sand, I haven't ventured down here that often. I'm usually more up north Well, I've suggested a couple of things to boost their defenses. If we can make larger versions of some of the traps that we've set, that might help. Is Blaylock able to trigger any magical traps to help us? Or do you just want to do physical traps? Well, we can all discuss that. Just be thinking. We need to at least start something tomorrow. Agreed. It's easier to the oasis if we can get rid of some of the attacks that are going on. These cultists are going to be a huge pain in the ass. I think they're coming from the oasis? I don't know if they're coming from the oasis, but uh, the fact is they're out in the desert. And if they're in the you desert, can go move there around. and look. Well, if Roman Koth Thank is you. the one that has put them together and organized them, it doesn't seem like he's changing his tactics any. Uh, this town was the portals. Up north was the tunnels. Obviously, they're using tunnels here somehow. We should talk to the captain and see if they've seen those metal suits that Karth has. You'd think if he was leading them, one or two of those machines would have made it down here to help penetrate the wall. Well, he may just be poking at the wall, seeing what the defenses are. 
It could also just be trying to do a distraction. That is always a possibility, but... I don't... I don't know. He has to... If we know that they're not getting any support from the castle, I'm sure he knows as well. That is a true statement. He may not need to pull out the big guns if he knows he can whittle away. If he finds out he's going to throw a lot of people at the wall. Well, if he has plenty of men to spare in those cultists, why not do little guerrilla warfare tactics? Well, I'm going to do some more research and get some sleep. We can talk more about this in the morning. Very well. All right. I'm just going to go over my notes for about an hour or so, try to piece things together, and then I'm going to go sleep. Okay. And I will be right back. Anyone else doing anything? Uh, I'm going to go up to my room, and then... Your room? You mean the, the top bunk? <laughs> Oh yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna. Is this where I did that? I can't remember. No, that was there. I'm gonna go back up into the top of the uh, top of the fort for the night. Sleep up there. Find a spot where it's uh, quiet and far away from everybody. Okay. And then attempt to reach out to Quailadon. Okay. You son of a bitch. One moment. So you you crawl up and kind of look around waiting for people to be somewhere else and what do you say are you there What do you need? I, the reason we're here is like we're going to the Oasis. I'm not sure what you know about that, but I, everybody I'm with, they want me to read myself of you. And I mean, I kind of get what they're saying, but you haven't done anything bad to me. This place is cursed. How is it cursed? Is, is the curse why this castle keeps getting attacked? The blood of my father runs here. How does that make it cursed? He was slain. There's nothing I can really do about that. That sounds... Oh, I'm sorry. That sounds like it must have been horrible. I lost my brother. That was really sad. I don't think... I don't wish anybody would have to go through that. You should leave this place. Oh, yeah, we're gonna head out soon. For sure. Probably in the next day or two. Away from the desert. Where should I go? Seek more power. For the more that you bring to me, the more I can give to you. What would you like? What can I bring you? Feed me. Help me grow. Are you hungry now? And I start reaching in my bag for some meat. Not now. Soon. That, that meat was starting to smell a little bit. But 
What should I do about... Do you know anything about the Oasis and... Freeing? Well, not that I want you to be freed from me, but... The they seek to take me from you. Well, Will you allow it? What can I do, though? That's either that or they're, they're gonna kill me. Choices wisely. The Oasis. What does the Oasis have to do with it? How is that gonna? Free? How is what? How is that gonna get rid of you? Free this that. place. Something about that which is good and pure. Do you know what that means? And the voice falls silent. I'll curl up into a little ball looking into the night sky, wondering what to do next. So you curl up and look around into the clear sky, contemplating the words of Quelladon and your journeys to come. Hey, okay. Okay. The next morning. Let's see here. Next morning comes. And you all awaken as normal. Uh, Zormir, as you awaken, there's uh, an archer standing over top of you, looking down at you, and he's kind of lightly kicking you. Hey, wake up! Mm, hey, what are you doing? I bit too much to drink last night. I just like to get away from the crowd. It's comfy up here to get the fresh air. Yeah, that's what I used to tell my wife. <laughs> You were able to get a, a wife? Hi! I'm quite attractive. Just don't look in a mirror, buddy. I'll gather myself up. I don't. I look in my shield. And I'm the most handsome man on this wall. Hmm. You haven't happened to have drank any potions or anything lately, have you? <laughs> you seem to be a bit delusional. Oh, I'm not the one sleeping up here on the towers. You get on out of here. We have, we got work to do. Make sure those snake people don't come back through here. Have you been, how have you been attacking? What's effective at, at attacking them? Well, what I like to do is I take an arrow out of my quiver I put it into my bow, and I put that arrow right through their bloody neck. You're a real war-trained criminal there, aren't you? Pat him on the shoulder and head off down. He just, huh! And he turns around and just begins peering out the tower. Uh, the rest of you, what are you doing? We know. Do I notice that he's not there when we wake up? When you wake up, you don't see him. Nope. I wake up, go tear, play lock, and Arlo. Any of you know where uh, Zormir ran off to? Here we oh. go again. Mm. No, I, I didn't I even have know not he seen him. I didn't see the, the little one said he was going to his room, and that was it. There's no rooms. We're all here. <laughs> I'm assuming it was bump like bunks. Yeah, I'm it, pretty it's sure. Regular like, barracks. <laughs> yeah, this is, yeah. All one but that's what he said, and then he went away. So he lied and walked away, and we have no idea what he's been doing. 
Guess well, we'll just have to press it out of him. If it's anything like the boat, he's somewhere up high. <sighs> well, I said we get something to eat. We'll go look for him here in a little bit. I say you go get him now. I can do that. We cannot let him go off on his own. We already know his choices are poor. Hey, you got that right. I'll get up and strap my sword on and head out and see if I can't go and locate him. I'll ask around if anybody has seen him. Okay. I'll as go you, out and help too. As you leave your room and come out into the tavern area, you see Zormir sitting there with some food at the table. Where have you been all night? Well, if you decided to wake up. I slept up on the tower in the fresh air. Why is that? Happen? I got rudely awoken by a guard. That's about it. Otherwise, peaceful night. Zoria, you cannot wander off. Wander off? I stayed within the walls of the fort. And did not let anybody know what you were doing. Nobody asked where I was going. You didn't tell nobody. Uh, according to Galtier, you were going to lay down. And I did. I wasn't lying about that. Do not go uh. wandering off again. We are trying to help you, Zoromir. No, I wasn't allowed to go in sleep in peace. I guess I won't sleep in peace anymore. Well, if you remember the uh, the experience on the I can't, uh, Talahan, where he was trying to attack you because you weren't riding with Arlo, he would show one thing that uh, Grayson is not with you by yourself. I didn't realize Grayson is now the father of the group. We all have to take command from him. It is when you have something evil inside of you. That's why you are still living. I'm living because I choose to be alive. Ormir, you're not helping yourself. We've already been through this. Just stick close to us, all right? Don't be wandering off. Bad things tend to happen when you are gone. Uh, I want to go to um, find Captain Fitzgerald and talk about uh, building some trenches and some ambush spots, things like that. <clears throat> How close do they actually get to the wall? Okay. What's everyone else doing? Probably just going to go walk out the wall, be with men. Outside the Am wall? To... Nope, inside the wall, up okay. on top of the wall. Am I allowed to get up from my seat, Grayson? As long as you're being watched by somebody in the party, I don't mind. Does anybody else have any objections to Grayson's rules of engagement? Because apparently he is the sole proprietor here. Grayson, we're just... We are Former, we're closer just doing to the bones of Quilladon than we have ever been before. Don't think that this pool that he has on Zoramir is just going to go away. I agree. Especially since he hears everything that we talk about, so he has to know about the Oasis. And we cannot trust Zoramir to tell us what's going on. Zoramir, why don't you just go with me and we'll go out and be with the men and give them some support. Well, in full transparency, Pelodon does not have any further or stronger grasp on me uh, while we're here. I will say 
Uh, he did talk to me briefly last night, and he seems to be mildly panicked that we're here. He does not like that I'm here, so... Perhaps this is his weak spot. So what do you think about that? Still want to get rid of it? Well, the fact that, that tooth out of you? The fact that he's fearful I'm here <clears throat> shows that he's not all powerful. Well, just stick with us. All right, just so we know, make sure he's not doing anything stupid with you. Um, grab some of his breakfast he's got sitting there. Come on, buddy, let's go. I'll catch up with you later, Grayson. Call tear. I'm going to sit down and eat some breakfast, and then I'll head out uh, to take a look along the walls. On the top two. Okay. You all, uh, Arlo, you you head out to talk with the men, and uh, Galtier, you eat some breakfast and kind of head that way as well. Grayson, you, who is Zormir with? Arlo, yeah. Me. Uh, Grayson, you find Captain Fitzgerald is uh, working at at fortifying some of the, the doors and things uh, in parts of the wall that have pushed through and uh, working just as hard as everyone else. And without even looking, she says, I hope you found what you were looking for. And pulls a rope tight and secures it in place and hits it forward. I'll help out as best as I can with some of the fortifications. Oh, Captain, no. Uh... I've never been to Lake Golan's Bay. What can you tell me about that place, if anything at all? It's a, it's a lake. Um, you know, sometimes we get our water from there, but of There's all no of Drakenwald, it seems quite unassuming. Your brother had some sort of thought process that there might be a shard piece there. I he Do not know anything of its past. On occasion he would go there with uh, some of the some of our, our people to, to draw water from from there, but I wouldn't know what would lead him there. Uh, it has no past. Uh, orcs tend to live on the other side in the forest, but they never cross over. Any of these people still living that I could be talking to? Uh, I, I mean, there a lot of our men have went over to get water from there. Can you uh, but, it with him specifically? Uh, that would be harder. We've either lost them or they've moved to Castle Verminia or somewhere else. But I'm sure... Maybe one of the older ones have went with him. All right. Well, about fortifications of the desert before the the wall. How close do they usually get? Sometimes they make it all the way to the wall and they attempt to bring down sections. Some of them have attempted to use magic from a distance to... Uh, light things on fire and but it, it always seems so futile well, I have a theory about that but the fact that you say they appear and then they disappear without a trace we have encountered like I said last night creatures that burrow tunnels underneath the ground that lead the armies of Roman Koth. He may be testing the waters here, oh, using I... the cultists to see 
Don't believe they would make it far underground here, all that sand. Be hard to no, leave a identifiable tunnel. Portals in the past. Uh, I kind of draw out what one of the constructs look like. Uh -huh. Have you seen anything like this? <laughs> now you draw things from books of fantasy? <laughs> what is this? What contraption... This contraption alone can take out hundreds. Hundreds? This is what they used at Cape Tabasa. Well, some of the, the survivors that came here spoke of strange machines, but that is not what I pictured. Currently, they are being controlled by individuals inside of them. Unfortunately, we've not been able to study much because they explode. It seems defeat. devastating. Very much so. But I would like to talk to you about digging trenches out in front of the fort. You want to dig Maybe trenches in extra... sand? I know it sounds tedious. Are you planning on staying for the next couple months while you dig these trenches? We're trying to help you, Captain. I understand, but you think that uh, we haven't tried? The sand covers everything. We've been able to put some things here and there to slow them down, but uh, the, the effort for the work, the results are not great. Well, I am no tactician. I appreciate the thought. Your heart is in the right place. But it seems the best solution is the standard ones. More archers. More more defenses. Stronger defenses. Well, the only thing we can do then is go out into the desert and try to find where they're coming from. If you could stop them at the source, that would fix things if they have a source, it's like an endless supply of creatures willing to die for something. A couple months ago, it got it got quiet for a while. Don't know what happened, but recently it is picked back up. Anything on the Oasis that you can give us information on? I've heard there's Oasis out there. The men have reported running into one as a nice respite from the scouting, but as I've told your compatriots before, those deserts, everything begins running together. You seek an Oasis. May the gods watch over you. And not just the sun. She'll be out of your hair shortly. Appreciate you doing what you can. <clears throat> now go back down. Okay. The rest of you head up onto the wall and you see the men walking back and forth and very militaristic standard procedure uh, keeping an eye on everything there's never an area that's not being watched uh, as you ascend to the top of the, of the the wall here
What do you want to do? How many archers do we see? Several. Uh, where you're at, at least four to five in each uh, corner tower, uh, and usually a couple walking along the walls as well. Zormer, you have any idea on traps we could set to help these guys? We don't know how close they get yet, but I know Grayson is trying to find out how far away they can get before they stop making any progress. Oh, uh, I have some rope. We could tie some <laughs> quick wires. Uh, some pile of, of acid. We could we could pour that all over the sand. Maybe that it would. They step in that. That would burn them. Mm. <laughs> Worst thief ever. <laughs> <laughs> the acid would probably only work until the sand covers it back up. However, if we can give the acid to the archers to use, either attach their arrows, that could help. And his eyes go wide. How did I never think of that? Brilliant. Probably because you always use a rapier. I should have some arrows. The only issue is, is the acid going, how are they going to attach the acid to the arrows without melting the arrows? <laughs> or just have a bag of it. And how they're going to guarantee it breaks once it hits their mark. I'm going to turn. Are there guards near us? Yeah. Do these creatures, do they come up the wall? Well, they've never come too far up. Usually they get within 20, 30 feet of the wall, and we plant one right in the old noggin. Are you the one that woke me up this morning? No, I've never seen you before. Hmm. I'm obsessed with noggins. Oh, well, okay. It's the best Thank place you. to hit them. Do you guys ever go out to retrieve the arrows if they're not broken? How do you guys maintain ammo capacity? No, we like just wasting everything and hoping Castle Vermenia sends us more supplies. That's the best way. Yep. Not reusable. Yes, we go out and get what we can. On chasm. Is there anything that you would like for us to be able to help you with while we're here? Before we head all beyond the walls? I do have this thing on my back. I think someone says it needs you know popped or something it's some kind of growth that maybe you could help me with that is that what you're talking about he starts like pulling up the back side of his tunic and moving it over to the side don't I think that's what he meant I and i'll pull the sword out pull my sword out a little bit i can cut it it starts uh, shimmering right because zorner is there if Sormir's that close. Yeah, he's right next to me. I don't think you just want to cut it off, though. I could just cut that big old thing right off your back. Zip, zip. Hey, as long as you don't spill one drop of blood. Ah, I spill lots of blood with this. I'll just slam it home. Keep on walking. All right. Look over my shoulder. If there's anything we can do, let us know. It's not on your back. Thanks. Will do. I just look at the guys. I think... I think they've got it squared away as much as they can here. I, I still think we need to try to go find the source of the problem. I don't like to 
wait for it to come to us seems like a waste of time the only issue from what I've gathered with them talking of how they can just keep coming and coming is we don't know how big that source is that we may be trying to find well I've always come through we fought some big stuff first before look at me I took care of those trolls out in the woods You mean the, the trolls that took you down three times? Yeah, I and can Zormir count that. got thing. you up. I was just, uh, I was just taking the blows for you guys, so you could, you know, take them down for you, you know, while I was distracting them. Ah, uh, yes. So you do with my body, give me back some more of those greater healing potions. Uh, well. No, I'm sure I'll need them for you once we get that tooth out of you. That's probably true. Just best I hold on to these for right now. Let's go and let's go find Grace. And this is getting to be boring up here on the up on this wall. Okay. Down and. See if we can't go and find Grayson or the captain. All right. You come down from the wall and you see Grayson approaching you from the other side of the courtyard. So, Grayson, we're here. <clears throat> find any of well, Anything uh, worth sharing? The brother spent a lot of time going back and forth between Lake Gold and Spain and here. In his notes, he, thinks, he, he suggests that the uh, shard piece is there somewhere. All she could tell me was that they gather water from there from time to time, but there's no real history or past that anyone knows of, but it is something to check out. And in front of fortifying this castle, she doesn't think there's anything that can be done that hasn't been tried before, so unless we can find the source of what's causing these attacks, then there's not much hope we can do for these people. I do know the Blaylock and kind of kind of got the same up uh, when we up top. Oasis in the past, so they have the best chance of finding it again. I agree. the The men up on top of the wall are pretty squared away, pretty sarcastic. They're just kind of waiting for the next. Well, do you blame them? Next fight. Do what? You have no help, no reinforcements, and you're getting attacked randomly from the front. I'd be a little sarcastic too. Yeah. I think we should just well, let's head to the oasis. That's that seems to be the biggest talking point we have as to finding out what's going on. Laylock, do you think you'll be able to find your way there again? Hmm, I think I might be able to try. You are the directional guru, so it has seemed. I can definitely lead this way. If you are ready to depart. So I suggest we get squared away and leave. All right. Does anybody need guys... to get anything before we leave? I think we should be all ready to go. 
Yeah. yeah. I think we're burning daylight. I think we should be on our way. I'm glad you agree, Alan. I think it should take us too long with the Talsa hints. How well did Talsa hand move on sand? As well as anything else does in sand. <laughs> Besides camels? I would say that there's probably not much for them to feed on or drink out there, so I would suggest not taking them. Yeah, right. Well, then by foot it is. Oh, fun. Hmm. Zormir. Back into the desert we go again. I was Hopefully, hoping we'd never see this place again. Our adventures are better than the last time we went out there. I glanced down at my arm. I'm feeling either way this is not going to be very fun for me. I don't believe so, my friend. I don't believe so. Thanks for the encouragement, friend. So y'all are heading out into the du- uh, the, the dungeon. The, dun- <laughs> the, dun- desert. Yeah. the, dun- the dun- desert. The desert. Mm-hmm. That's we're on our way. All right. Blaylock is leading. To see the wizard. So he is going to roll survival check. Let's see what his mod is. Not great. Not great. Flash of genius. Oh, it's just it's just a roll. Um, oh, guidance. Guidance. <laughs> okay. Oh my. Okay. You travel out into the desert for quite some time. The piercing sun bakes your skin as you drag yourself and the the fort of the black wall diminishes in the distance as you move further and further away from it into the sands. And before long you see uh, a couple uh, humanoids with a camel that's grossly overburdened with supplies heading your direction. And as they get closer, you see a a brown-scaled lizard man, and he's just... Uh, you can see the sun has parched his skin. It's maybe been a while since he's had any water of any sort. He's just leading. Oh, look, it's a customer. Why are you out here in the middle of the desert? Why, I live out here. Live out here? How do you survive? Some of us are built to be in this kind of environment. My small, meaty friend. I hope you look at me that way. (laughs) Is there anything I can get for you? Not for me. Fellas? Good. What are you selling out here? Oh, water seems to sell well, and various alcohols of my own making. Uh Uh-oh. I also have some fine clothes, much like what I have here. And he kind of presents himself, and it's a brown sackcloth type material that kind of covers his head and he's got a rope tying it together. Have you happened to run across any more of the cultists out here? Oh, the cultists are everywhere, my child. It's... They come up. In particular, larger groups gathering together? 
Sometimes the armies march, but I haven't seen them for days. Which direction? West. Have you seen the oasis? I have found it once or twice, but it seems like it chooses who it lets find it and who doesn't. Hmm. Interesting. So the armies gather towards the west. Last I saw, desert. it's been a couple days, so probably quite far by this point. Which way were they heading? Seemed like they were heading east. How much for your water skins? Five silver each. How much water they hold? A couple quarts. And he takes them out, and instead of back? typically, you've seen water skins made from furs of different animals and things. Uh, these seem to be made from some scale-like skin. I made them myself. I'll take ten. Ten? Okay. He pulls pulls them all out and you see his eyes go wide. Here you go, and he hands them to you, and they're slightly dripping from here and there, but they're holding water. Drink it while you can. So you each of us have two. If you need more, I should be molting in a day or two and won't should be able to oh. make some more. Interesting enough. Where do you fill these up with water from? As I said, when I find the oasis, or it lets me find it, I do what I can. Okay. Right, so that's 50 silver. You were five uh, silver a piece, and you bought how many? Oh, I thought you said two. two. Oh, did I say two? Two? Okay, yeah, so ten silver. Wouldn't that be 20 for 10? If there's two silver apiece? Yeah, it's, Math. it should be 20. Okay. Math is Sorry. hard. Math is hard. Mm -hmm. Shall we continue? You see him bag the coins. Good journeys. And Blaylock leads you forward. Nod and follow the Minotaur. <laughs> Good thing he's getting advantage. Mm -hmm. uh, you move further west as the day stretches on and gets into early evening and you find the ruins of an old city uh, here. Stone juts into the sky uh, walls torn down. It doesn't look like it's been occupied for quite some time. Uh, Zormir and Blaylock both recognize these as they found them once before. They look 
quite familiar. Is it safe to rest here for a little while? Should be safe. I don't think anything else is going to be coming out of these old walls. I can sound barely hear you. Are the people having trouble hearing me? I can hear you just fine. Yeah. You hear everybody just fine. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, I've been having problems with Arlo tonight. I'm not trying to talk too much because it's all jacked up. Yeah. All right. Wait for it to wig out. So you are all camping here tonight? I'll take the first walk. Please. Okay. I'll take second. All right. Take third. <laughs> do we, have, a, do we no. have time to do anything before the watch starts? That's up to you. I can read a little more of the book for an hour or two. I don't mind reading it. Okay. Since the book is the only thing I don't fail on. Make it over here. All right. We have three left, so roll a d6. You begin reading. How long do you want to read? Uh, it's like an hour or two. Okay. You begin reading about the Rite of the Oracle. Anyone else doing anything? Meditate. Okay. Roll it up. Eighteen. Okay. As you meditate on the past, the present, and the future, your mind opens up, and under the peaceful stars of the desert, it helps. Anyone else? All right. Nope. Uh, roll up first watch. That one. Oh. <laughs> um, Galtier, you watch, but the, the desert heat was so strong today that you're just exhausted and you fall asleep during your watch. But nothing happens. Um, if I don't, I'm not gonna be awake to wake uh, Grayson nope. up. Nope. Uh -huh. okay. Grayson, roll a perception with disadvantage. And we were all even in our seat. <laughs> Twenty-one. Okay. Uh, you wake up past the halfway mark, uh, but before it's fully daylight, and notice that Galtier is completely asleep. Well. <laughs> guess, uh... Okay. Then I will take a watch. <laughs> All right. Desert, this is my forte. Roll it up. No, definitely not. 21. Okay. I take it back. Dirty 20. Okay. Um, the desert sands are calm outside of a breeze, and it's actually kind of relaxing to have the silence of the desert compared to everywhere else you've been lately. The sun rises over the horizon, and Blaylock wakes up and peers around. If everyone else is ready, he will lead you further. Ready when you guys are. Let's go. All right. Uh, you know, some of us got a little more rest than others. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not used to being in the desert. 
Let me All grab right. my other tower real quick, too. Mm, Grayson, on tower. come look at this. And he points up to... You see some... Uh, a small trail of footprints and some drag marks uh, going across the sand that are being covered up with the winds heading to the direction to the west. Uh, maybe five five humanoids of some sort. It's hard to tell with the drag lines. Uh, but it looks well, like... You can still see tracks and they can't be that far ahead of us. It appears that uh, someone might have been watching you last night. Hmm. Shall we follow them, or...? I... ...feel we should continue... ...to find the Oasis and be done... ...with this harassment of... ...Zoramir. Well, what you call harassment, I call saving my ass. After you... Consistent. <laughs> All right. You continue on. The desert sands push and push you on you. That this the sun is at its apex now, and I'm being a little more cautious, and I am watching around to see if I catch a glimpse of anybody following okay. us. Okay. Uh, on occasion, with your passive perception, you uh, see, you know, various creatures skitter by, small desert creatures, uh, snakes from time to time. Nothing that uh, you're super concerned about. And he goes on. You cross over an extremely large dune and Blaylock looks out over the horizon. Hmm. It seems I haven't lost my touch. And as you all crest the top of the dune, uh, you see several small palm trees surrounded by this endless desert. Grasses litter the landscape around a large pool of water, and the water glistens like glass in the mid-afternoon daylight. Oh, looky there. Good job, Boylock. Thank you. That's one part of this journey that's been solved. Once we make it there, we should probably try to figure out the middle. Hmm. Why not just jump into the oasis? We don't know. Well, shall we? See, we shall. You work your way. It still takes you some time. It was far off in the horizon, but you eventually get closer and feel the breeze blowing through. Uh, and you see that the water is crystal clear. Small bubbles break the surface of the water from time to time, but uh, Zormir and Blaylock both remember that they drank this water and it was it was quite quite good. I'll down and take a drink. Putting Zoramir's fate. <laughs> Maybe oh, I need to... appropriate. This one's made with my new mapping software as well, so prettier trees and terrain. 
me a moment while my computer loads up the rest of the map. And that's this foundry. That's not part of it. The black wall. I have multi-use maps. That was supposed to be already. All right. So you stand before the crystal clear water. Arlo, you dip down and take a, a drink of water. And it's cool and refreshing. Surprisingly cool for being this far out in the desert. And then I fall over asleep. Now you feel refreshed. Uh, you didn't have to wear a constitution check. I'm asleep. You're good. <laughs> Very good. It's cool. I'm going to refill those water Very skins delicious. that we got. And I'll grab my water skin and fill it up. Okay. You and Galtier, come over. What are the rest of you doing? Blaylock sits on a rock. Looking proud of himself. I found it. I still have my touch. We never said you didn't. Never thought Blaylock. you lost it there, Blaylock. I'm going to go up to the water's edge and put my hands into it, scoop up a uh, handful of the water and slurp it down the water is cool and refreshing to your tongue as you pour it down in this hot desert sun okay about this riddle I can find it real quick. follow a little bit I just need to find it yeah, I know I took a screenshot of it and sent it. The curse that brings the scales again is not removed by fabled winds. To rip the soul from a vessel's chest, you might need to embark on a simple quest. An oasis in the desert sands, a memory of once fertile lands. The spirit of, what, of that which is good and pure must plunge into that where the scales endure. Release the spirits that live past their prime to fight in battle one last time. Only then will the soul be free from the darkness that resi resides in thee. Hmm. I just need to take what a plunge I... into this water? I would suggest taking a swim, maybe? Okay. Is your voice saying anything, Arlo? Maybe meditate? And speak with it. I should, uh, but oh, he says that I'm just gonna take a couple steps back. I'll go over, take a running start, and just leap in. You see, Zormir step back a couple paces and just run forward. You hear, and he leaps forward and splashes into the the water, completely submerged. And for a few moments, you don't see Zormir anymore in the water become still at the top and then like like dipping a muddy glove into uh, a clean bucket of water you see just dirt float up from where he jumped in and he swims up and spits some water out um, and he's just kind of holding himself there in the water a little bit cleaner <laughs> Stormer got a bath I feel great. I think it worked. There's no difference in your appearance. Oh, pull my... We're, we're waiting for Captain Roboto, I think. Oh. 
You pull your sword out? Okay. Yep. Look at it. Okay. Right now it's See just it normal. Still glows. Zormir's far enough away. Uh, it's not glowing at the uh, moment. I'm going to go and um, see if I can't talk to talk to her out there. See, see if I can get some guidance. Okay, are you wanting to go somewhere else? or No, just up here by the rock. Just away. I just get down on my just squat down on the knees, pull the sword out across my legs. Okay. And try to talk to him. All right. What do you say? Great dragon. You have heard us talk of, of this quest that we are on. Can you... Can you tell me anything about what needs to be done? What would you have me say? Just looking for some guidance. We want to get this evil out of him, preferably without killing him. You must do what you must did not know if you had any but I don't want to kill him I want to know if there's an alternative way for that I cannot speak young Arlo I mean You are, I mean, you are, you are pure, you know, and that just, you know, we've been talking about this as, you know, maybe the spirit of that, which is good and pure, we think maybe that was you. It might maybe. be. I did not write the legend. Cut it. Cut. But do you know of the legend? I do not. Very well. Then I'll just get up, put my sword away, come back to the others. All right. Go over to Grayson and tell him what I found out, what I was, what we discussed. Okay. I am at a loss, Grayson. Oh, we can always try to stab him. Do what now? Are you still swimming, Zormir, or did you come back to shore? I'm swimming back into yeah. shore. Okay. Your sword is good. His his passenger is evil. Maybe by piercing the scales, something will happen inside the water. I'm well, not saying like to kill you, Zoramir. I'm just saying that. We don't really have any other options at this moment. Yeah, I'm sure you would like stabbing me with a sword to be the only option available. At least it's a chance not to kill you. Well, anybody but Grayson gets to hold that sword. I didn't say I was going to use the sword. He's going to use the sword. It is his sword. looking at it. Or no you can be a bigger man sword. and try to take out the tooth yourself in the water. Mm. You said you were able to do that. Small poke. Mm -hmm. 
small poke in the water. What are, what are you doing? How are you doing what you're doing? <laughs> <laughs> so the scales cover his back and his chest now? That's what I'm asking. So his scales you, cover his You've never chest seen him back. without you've never seen him without uh, his shirt on. So Zormer, do you know where your that tooth is inside of you? Um, I forgot what you said. Do I know exactly where it is in me? No. I thought I Yes oh, you do. I thought you told him one time he knows exactly where it's at all the time. He knows where Quelodon is, but the Quelodon knows where it's at, but Zormir does not. That's weird. No, I th- okay. I thought you said he knew where the tooth was in his body. Yeah. Mm-mm. I thought that was okay. Didn't come well, that changes. Kind of hunkering, one eye shut, kind of looking at him, eyeing the sword. What are you doing? Zormir? I've always told you I've always had your back, and I believe I always have. Mm. I need you to take your shirt off. Whoa. Is all of them around? I know you felt like that. <laughs> we know you're changed. We know things have changed on you, but... I need to see where the scales are. Slowly take my shirt off. You see scales running down his chest and down his back and spreading in onto his arm. His back is covered basically completely. And running up his neck, of course, into the back of his head. You see his small horns protruding. Friend, this has really taken over your body. Like I said, it's given me powers. Powers even you said are not for good, but for evil. I didn't say that. It's you very good for me. You know you can't control him. I don't know what him so far. I don't want to kill you. I just want to see if I can't help you and heal you and get this tooth out of you. Curious to see how healing with a sword is going to work. I think this is the solution. Karathar is very pure in this. He is pure in spirit. I've got plenty of healing spells potions for you. Grayson, any suggestions on how I should do this? I say through the chest. Through the chest? And pierce the scales. I have no idea. But we start with the arm. Chest seems scary. Says the scales. Where the scales endure, your arm is not covered. I thought it was going down my arms. No. It does go down his arms. I thought you, you just said that it didn't. You just said they started on his arm. They're starting down the arm. It's not like completely chest covered down, back. but chest back, yeah. <laughs> my bad. Soul Sorry. lies in the heart. <laughs> Zoramir, go ahead and kneel, my friend. I'm already at your hip height. Why do I need to kneel? You're gonna like stab him and kick him in the water? Spark kick. So I'll pull my sword. Detect magic. Do I see anything? In this area? 
No? Hmm. So Arlo, you pulled your sword out? Yes. It glows as you stand next to Zoromir. Why are you taking so long? It's, uh, this is the suspense is making me scared. So am I. I'm going to take the sword, grab it both hands, going to put it in the middle of his back, aim for the heart. Aim for the heart? Okay. And lunge. Okay. One moment. I'm literally shaking right now. Zormir, I sent you a message. Time to pull out that new character. Okay. Harlow, you take the sword and with a tear running down your cheek, you thrust it into the back of Zoromir. Uh, Grayson, you see the blade pierce through the chest and stick out of the front of Zoromir as his eyes grow wide. The sky begins to darken. And the sword begins to vibrate. It becomes hard to hold in your hand. Arlo, do you keep hold of the sword? Yes. As you squeeze your grip tighter, you feel the energy pulsing through the blade. Zormir, you want to grasp at the blade and push it out. But you, as you do, you're running your hands down the blade and cutting them. There is a massive burst of light and darkness. And one second as Arlo, you take 37 points of necrotic damage. How many do I take? That's coming. Hold on. Oh, okay. Good. I was worried. Oh, no. You're taking damage. Zormir, did you... Did you rest and... You took a long rest. Did you do your hip points? Yeah. Zormir, you take 73 points of radiant damage. And can't really dodge that. No. As the burst of energy explodes yeah. out... Arlo and the rest, all of you, are quickly blinded by this bright flash of light. But Arlo, when you open your eyes, you look around and you see Zoromir with the blade in him. You see the look on Blaylock's face <coughs> and Galtier and Grayson, but they're not moving. They're frozen in a moment. <coughs> like time has stood still. His face, Zormir's face, is just wincing in pain. The sands around you have faded away, and you see a lush green land filled with trees, small farms, 
you turn quickly to see dragonborn in large numbers standing on the other side of the pond. Light sparkles off the pond in the morning light. You see standing there two golden dragonborn in long white robes holding a large, large egg. They walk slowly over to a pair of red dragonborn kneeling at their feet. Take this with you. May the dragon within keep you safe and protect your family. The pristine vision of the lush green lands fade back to desert sands. As the bright light scatters further across the stands, sands, illuminating everything, you hear it. <laughs> Palm trees begin falling down with a heavy thud as you wipe your eyes to find what's going on. And before your vision clears, you hear a heavy thud on the sands. Freed from my confinement to walk these lands again. A force to be reckoned with. A power untold. Unbridled. I will burn these lands to the ground and reduce the house of Harker to ash. My talons pierce into the desert sands. Of my birth long ago, it gives me strength. As you make sense of what stands before you, you hear another echoes of, of footsteps in the sands. You have raised your last village, Crelodon the Destroyer. The only lands you will be walking are the Nine Hells as you await your punishment. As you rub your eyes, you look up and see, facing off in front of each other, two massive dragons come on maybe there we go oh I just saw this on was it dirt on dragon's blood I watched it earlier today sorry computer's not great coming to doing this. Nice artwork. Come on. Come on. How stacked are your resources at right now? Well, this is on the, the laptop. I should have oh. used a different laptop for tonight. While you're doing that, I'm going to take a few minutes. I got a bandage going up. Okay. There we go. Hey, that's a, that's a gold dragon.
On one side, you see a translucent black mass of scales, hints of green along the edges, and foreboding orange eyes burn into your soul. Across from him is a massive translucent golden dragon standing tall and regal against the blue sky. Its golden white scales shimmer in the sunlight as it shakes its head and lowers it towards Queladon. Parathia, you should have been banished long ago. I will end your line and those who follow you. Your death approaches on swift black wings. Roll for initiative. Woo. Playlock in form, roll the four, so that's solid. Yeah. I, I didn't do much better. Alright, give me one second here. Zormir? Grayson? 21. Galtier? 7. Arlo? All right, Grayson, you are first. The hawkers have put you down once, and they'll do it again. I'm going to run up within 10 feet of him and attack the three. Okay. First attack, 16. Uh, give me one second. Uh, that misses. Second attack. Mm, 19. That misses. 39. Okay. Now that's my turn. Okay. Uh, Zormir, you are up. So sorry, friend. As I run up with my rapier. Now you still have Arlo's sword in you. <laughs> oh, it's just hanging out of me? Yeah, it's through you, yeah. So if you run up, I guess you oh. pull yourself off he... the blade. Yeah, as he runs, yeah. I'll, I'll pull it out. Okay. Shink. Where are you roll running up to? Uh, up to Quayla. Okay. 18 to hit. That misses. Alright. And then I'm going to disengage back as much as I can. Okay. Yep. Alright. It's Rathir's turn. First attack. That hits. Second attack. Who's he hitting? Uh, Quailodon. Hits. And definitely hits. Okay, so the first one does. 
18 points of damage. Oh, that was a perfect roll for the second one. 20 points of damage. And another 18. As he lunges forward, uh, and bites and claws into Quailodon. You see him ripping flesh from Quailodon, uh, but it's an ethereal flesh as he rips it, but still the, the sand is uh, covered in the, the black blood from within. It's now Quailodon's turn. And he is going to attack Herathia. Hits. Misses. Yay. Definitely hits. <laughs> <laughs> For 18. And... Fifteen. All right, Arlo, it's your turn. All right, I'm gonna run up and attack. First one was a nineteen for crit. On um, your sword is in his chest. So what are you attacking with? No, he pulled no, it out. out. Okay, yeah. Yep. Okay, I didn't hear that. Zoramir ran off the blade, basically. So I'll run up and attack. First one was a crit. Second one was 23. And the third one was 22. Okay. Those all hit. Uh, normal damage was 27. Okay. Double damage on the crit. Zormir and Galtier both have temporary hit points. Ten temporary hit points. As they grow confident. Is that magical turret that we don't really know what it does, but it does something? <laughs> okay. What's the rest of your damage? That'd be 11 points of damage. 11. Okay. All right. That it? Yep. Galtier, you are up. Okay, uh, I will drink one of my potions and then run up so I can attack Colodon. Attack. So 22 hit? Yep. Okay, I will roll my second attack real quick. Um, okay, let's just deal the 22 real quick. <laughs> Uh-oh. Where my dice go? Yeah, it's a, uh, not one for a second attack. Okay. Uh, eight points. So 14 points of damage. And I didn't put a uh, anything else on it. So it's just 14 points of damage and then that one. All right, what do we got? That is considered Butterfingers. Butterfingers. You lose your grip mid-swing and your weapon goes flying 1d4 plus 1 times 5 feet away in the direction of your target. Make a ranged attack roll against the nearest creature other than the target in that direction. Is <laughs> what? So you need to roll a d4. Okay. 
Uh, three. So four times five, so 20 feet. It flies north of you, and you need to make another attack roll to see if it hits the gold dragon. Well, north of him would be Quelodon. Yeah. Yeah. It, it... It's the nearest creature north of him. Which would uh, be Quelodon. That's not the target. That's not the target. Okay. Yep. So it'd be the dragon. The, or Karathir. So how's the... You said a range attack. Uh, what do I... Do I have my normal plus sign modifier it's, to it? Yeah, it's just... You're yep. just rerolling your attack to see if you hit him. Uh, 24. That hits. <laughs> now I'm going to get attacked by a gold dragon, too. For 14 points of damage. Okay. I'm rolling max on my D8 and freaking lowest on my D20. So, yeah, six times five. So that sword is now 30 feet away. Mm-hmm. Bye, sword. Uh- are you uh, at the end of your turn? Yeah. At the end of your turn, Quelodon's going to do what? I'm not going on the other side of the goddamn dragon, bro. <laughs> That's all I got to say to that one. Uh-huh. Quelodon's going to attack um, Arlo. And he hits with his tail. For 22 points of damage. And Hrothir is going to attack Quailodon with his tail. He hits for 16 points of damage. Blaylock is up. Blaylock is going to cast a spell. What spell is he going to cast? He is going to cast... Heal. He's going to cast Haste on Zormir. Mm, Move faster. And Quelodon's going to make another attack at Galtir, or an attack at Galtir. Oh, that definitely hits. <laughs> For 17 points of damage, Hrathir's going to attack Quelodon. For 20 points of damage. All right, Grayson, you are up. First attack is 24. That hits. damage. I'm going to use one of radiant damage on it. Five radiant damage. Okay. Is that it? Um, what I'm going to use. I'm trying to mark them all off because they're in different spots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm going to use a key point. Where was it? That'll be it. That's my turn. Okay. Zormir, right. you're up. I'll take that back. I get one more attack. Hold on. I get one more attack. Okay. I only attack once. 
And it's a nat one. Oh, mm, of course. see, now you wish you skipped. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, Zormir has confidence, and so does Galtier, thanks to Tricky. Yeah, I, the I, thank you. The weapon bounces off your target and strikes you in the face. You have disadvantage on your next attack. <laughs> <laughs> well, yours oh. is better than mine was. True. Yeah, that's true. I'm not taking damage from it. Zormir, <laughs> you are up. 26 to hit. That hits. Okay. Uh, and this is sneak attack, correct? Absolutely. Oh, that was a bad one. Uh, 29 points. All right. And then I'm going to swing again. Uh, dirty 20 to hit. That misses. What? All right. And I'm going to disengage back uh, 15 feet. Okay. All right. Krathir bites at Kraladon in a massive battle of titans and misses the first attack. Hits with the second. Hits with the third. For a total of 40 damage. Quilladon raises up and turns toward all of you and breathes a cone of acid and Ooh. all of you need to make a dexterity saving throw. Do I still have immunity to that? Yes. I do. So, um, I should roll for Blaylock, I guess. Oh, that might be... Blaylock succeeds. Uh, Grayson. That's a failure. Arlo. Uh, I had nine, and then I'm going to use my Ring of Evasion. And okay. pass it. With what? Oh, is it just automatic? Uh, the ring is an automatic. Okay. Galtier? 23. That saves. And Blaylock saves. Zormir? I'm immune. You're immune, but did you make the save? Oh, what did I have to roll? Deck save. Dexterity. Uh, 28. Yep, that's safe. So, Barely. Grayson, you're the only one that failed. Everyone else will take half damage. 21. Wow. Yeah, DC was 22. Wow. Grayson, oh. you take you take 81 points of acid damage. The rest of you take 40. Uh, Zoramir, you don't take any. as Quailodon breathes acid all over you. Arlo, you're up. Oh. <clears throat> Blaylock I am going to... And Zormir, you're exhausted as Blaylock could not hold concentration on you. Actually, I think he has Warcaster. Doesn't matter. Haste fades. All right, they'll go for it. That one ring. I went ahead and I rolled for a. I did a greater healing, and then I took my bonus action for second wind. And that's my turn. All right, Arlo 
pulls a potion out of his backpack, quickly chugs it away as he focuses his inner energy and see some of his wounds begin to heal uh, as acid just kind of drips off of him. And... Quailodon is going to make a tail attack against Hrathir. Natural 20 with his tail attack. Wow. Good thing it wasn't one of you guys, huh? <laughs> okay. Boom. Double damage, and if this attack deals force or thunder, we'll push back 1d4 times 5 feet. One second here. One second. Grayson, you feel your wounds begin to close as you're healed for 40 hit points with unnatural what? healing. Half-ass beer review. And Tricky, coming. It's they've been storing crazy. these points up. What was that effect again? <clears throat> Double damage, and if this attack deals force or thunder damage, you will push back 1d4 times 5 feet. It does not. So he hits him for 40 points of damage. All right. Uh, Galtier, it is your turn. Uh, I know a 27 has to hit if a 20 something hit. It did. Uh, that's nine, nine damage and six ice damage. And then my second pack missed. All right. Just dirty 20 misses, right? Yep. And Hrath, uh, Quelodon's going to make another attack against Hrathir and vice versa. He misses. Hrathir's going to go against Quelodon. At this point, I just need to use digital dice because <laughs> he misses. It's too much. Blaylock. Laylock is going to reach over and cast Cure Wounds on Zoramir. Zoramir, you are healed for 22 points. Grayson, you are up. Disadvantage on this one. Of course, it'd be a net 20. <laughs> and then a 17. All right. Second attack. That one. Oh, no. It's Rex all over again. <laughs> on your next two attacks. Cold muscle. Okay, that's my turn. All right, at the end of your turn, uh, there are three of you there. So, that's Arlo by the dice. He's going to make a tail attack. Oh, he definitely hits. Of course. For 23 points of damage as his tail comes smacking you across. Poof! You hear bones cracking. And Hrathir's going to attack oh, Quailodon. Yeah. And that hits. For 17 points. All right. Zormir, you are exhausted. You can't do anything this round as haste fades. Sweet. You look around and you're just out of breath already and you're kind of thinking to yourself, well, that was fast. <laughs> and <laughs> as you drop your head down, you see, even though Blaylock reached out and, and gave you some healing, that the hole in your chest did not heal. Oh, hmm. Rathir is up, and he is going to attack Quailodon. First attack. That hits. Second attack. 
That hits. Third attack. Hits. First attack. Hits Quailadon for... 30 points of damage. Second and third. Another 30. All right. Quite the long goes. And he draws his head back and breathes toward Harathir. Rathier fails to save. Hold on. Damage numbers ticking up. And Harathir takes 70 points of damage. Damn. Well, that one's a bad bitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Arlo, you are up. Uh, with rage in my eyes as to see what's going on, I am going to um, cast... Cast. I'm going to do um, Fighting Spirit. So I get 10 tip, hit and advantage on everything. So I rolled a 28, 19, 25, 27, 20, and a 24. Okay, everything below 22 hit. hit or uh, everything below 22 misses. Okay, so that would be 20 off of that. So it'll be 45 points of damage. Okay. All right. Is and that the end? And I'm done. All yeah. right. Uh, at the end, Quailodon is going to smack you with his tail because you just hit him. He hits. You take 16 points of bludgeoning damage. Gautier, you are up. I swing three times and miss every single time. All right. Herathir is going to attack Quailadon and misses. Blaylock is up. Um, Blaylock is going to kick Zormir as he stands back there for 12 points of healing. Ooh. And Quailadon and Hrathir are going to attack each other with their tails. Quailadon hits. Hrathir hits. All right, Grayson, you are up. First attack. Twenty-two. That hits. Second attack. Sixteen misses. Seven. So your damage is halved on this one. Damage is halved on this one. That is. So seven damage. That's half from sixteen. I'm going to throw in 
radiant damage on top of that. And that is seven radiant damage. I don't know if that gets halved as well since that's an effect. All right. Arlo, until the end, for the next two rounds, by the way, you have uh, the effects of the shield spell as a glyph of protection covers you. Gene. Did you get that? Daddy piece? needs it. What was that? Sorry, I missed it. It was an extra seven damage uh, radiant. I don't know if that's half because that's a spell effect. No. Okay. Uh, then I will do. And Grayson, you are affected by that as well because you're within 10 feet. Nice. I'm going to do action surge and attack two more times. Okay. First one's a 27. To hit. Second one. Another 16. So this one is. 14 regular damage and 8 radiant damage. All right. And that is my turn. So, shield, so what that adds 5 to my AC? Yep. And you can't be hit by magic missile. Nice. All right. Zormir, you are up. Oh, good thing. 26 to hit. That will hit. Four. Uh, uh, for 36 points of damage. All right. As you run okay. up and stab into your once loyal subject, he looks down at you in surprise. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm gonna disengage back ten feet. He is very angry now. Um, as he does, he brings his tail around to attack Grayson. Does a 29 hit? <laughs> uh-huh. uh, hold on. We'll see. So I'm at 26. Yeah. I assume it's 28 in the AC. All right. So you are hit for 24 points of bludgeoning damage. Grathir bites into Quailodon. That's going to hit. Let's see if the second attack hits. That was almost a natural one, but it does Great. hit. Great. And hits. So he hits for 20. Fifteen. And ten. And... Quilladon. Um... For his first attack, he's going to go down the line. He's going to bite at Galtier. That will definitely hit at Galtier. You take 20 points of piercing damage and 7 points of acid damage. Arlo, you're next. That misses. And Grayson, you're last. Natural 20. What we got? Winded. You suffer one level of exhaustion. Okay. 
And you take... 18 points of slashing damage. Arlo, you are up. Uh, only hit one out of the three uh, for 12 points. Okay. You slash furiously at him, but he's hard to hit being semi-translucent in the sun. He is going to take a tail attack at you because you did hit him. Does 34 hit? Mm. Oh my gosh. Really? 34? <laughs> Barely. 16 points of bludgeoning damage. Galtier, you are up. I attack three times, hit once for a total of 16 damage with half that being ice. Okay. And he's going to take a tail attack at you. There's a 23 hit. Mm -hmm. Okay. You take 16 points of bludgeoning damage, and Herathir is going to attack him with his tail. He hits. 420. Laylock is going to move up to Arlo and kick him. Whew. Thank you. For 18 so points I of health. And... Rothier's going to hit Blaylock with its tail for doing that. And he misses. Or, uh, that was Quailodon, not Rothier. Sorry. Grayson, you're up. Hey. First attack. A dirty 19, but I am going to use my monster die, slayer die, and use precision attack and add a 1d8 to that. Okay. So that's 23. That'll hit. Okay. Seven. 17 regular damage. I'm going to use my last radiant on him for three radiant damage. Okay. As the whip cracks out. 23 to hit. Okay. For 15 damage. All right. Is that it? Do something else here. Hold on. I have to read to see if it if I'm doing it correctly. After this happens, Rothier hits uh Quelodon for twenty points of damage. Tail attack. Zormir, you're on deck. He... You're on deck. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. What do you got, Grayson? Use the key fueled attack. Okay. I'm spending a key point to get one more attack. Alright. It's a 22 to hit. That hits. Sixteen damage. Um now my AC is is the shield still in effect? Yep, for till the start of your next round. 
Okay, so now my AC for your benefit is 31. Okay. Zormir, you're up. 23 to hit as well. Uh, and then that's going to be uh, 32 points of damage. All right. I'm going to use Blood Curse for the exposure to double that. Or weaken his resilience to it, I guess, technically. That won't affect his... Uh, it just... It doesn't affect the sneak attack die. Okay. So you need the base damage die? Base damage goes up a little bit. Uh, it was 9. Okay. So it goes up to Oh, 18. wow. <laughs> yeah, I didn't do what I thought I was going to do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Roth ears up. He's going to bite and claw. He misses. Hits. And. Misses. All right. So he takes 18 points of damage. Quailadon. Looks down at all of you. No! <sighs> and breathes acid down. You need to all make a deck saving throw. Blaylock fails. Twenty-two. Oh, Blaylock's here. Blaylock's, Blaylock's here. Is that, is that Biddle? Biddle's on? Yeah, he's here. Just in time for us to shut her down. You guys have to fix your cameras. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Um, Blaylock failed. Galtier. Deck saving throw? Yep. Fail. Harlow. 20. Fail. Zoramir. Thank you. Okay, Save. then I'm going to use my ring. Okay. It has two charges. Three. Three? Okay. Grayson. 22. 22? Okay, that's a save. Yep. So everyone but uh, Zormir, Grayson, and Arlo. They'll take half damage. Everyone else takes full damage. So Blaylock takes 71 points of damage. Blaylock, are you able to get that? I got it. Okay. Um, it means Galtier, you take 71. Arlo, you take 35. Zormir takes thir none. And Grayson takes 35. We're getting right. brought near death. I'm doing quite well in this fight so far. Arlo, you're up. That acid resists. Or, I... uh, <clears throat> Blaylock is down, down, by the way. All right. Blaylock <clears throat> is down. I'm also down. going to turn around can I so do I see that that he's down yeah you look around you can see that uh, Galtier and Blaylock have dropped to the ground I mean okay. Blaylock's right behind you so <laughs> you'd hear a thud <laughs> thud so I'm going to turn around and Drop a, 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 a healing potion into Blaylock. 
Yes. Eight points. Okay. Stand up. We need you. Mm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Galtier, make a death saving throw. No. I just stabilize because I'm a boss. Oh, yeah, you get to use that okay. parapet. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You're, so I, I you're still out. Stabilize. You're just not bleeding yeah. out. I don't, know how, I don't know how to mark it on. Yeah. Death. Or B &B. <laughs> you just stop marking them. You're stable. You're at zero okay. hit points. Blaylock, you're looking up at Arlo standing over top of you and two massive dragons fighting each other. Oh, dear. Uh, I'm going to drop down uh, the turret. Uh, arcane protector. Okay, you do that. <laughs> I Was cannot that put it down. I cannot put no. it on the screen because <laughs> oh, I don't have a token right. for it yet. <clears throat> um, and then he's going, and then, and then it's uh, as a bonus action at the end of my turn. I'm going to tell it to pulse, and I'm assuming that it is by everybody. Yeah, it won't oh, hit Galtier because he's out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he he's at zero. No, it's, it's zero. Temp. Never mind. Yep. yep. Uh, 11. 11 temporary hit points. Okay. Uh, as seeing you throw the turret out, Quailodon's going to make a tail attack against you, Blaylock. And misses. How much was that healing potion for, by the way? Eight. Thank you. And Harathir is going to make attack against Quailodon for 17. All right. Grayson, you are up. First attack. And your shield has faded. As <clears throat> Arlo, yours will as well at the start of your turn. 23. Nineteen damage. Okay. Thank God. It's not an at one, it's an at nineteen crit. <laughs> well it's time. Oh my god, dude. Uh, okay, maximum damage and you may make another attack with advantage against the same target. So max damage for me is 19. Okay. Twenty-four for the next attack. Okay. Sixteen damage. All right. I'm to use another key point for focused. Oh, I'm sorry. Focus for key fuel, which gives me one more attack. And that's a twelve. So this is All right, is that it? Yeah, that, that was my last one. All right, Zormir, you're up. Uh, but my AC is still 26. Okay. 28 to hit. Okay. Uh, that was a horrible sneak attack roll. 18 plus uh, 14 is what? Uh, 32. All right. Quailodon looks at Betrayer. And I'm 
going to disengage back 10 feet. <laughs> Run! Ah! And as you disengage, you feel part of your life force drain from you and go to Quailodon. Hmm. You take... Interesting. 15 points of necrotic damage. Okay. And Hrothier's gonna go. He hits. He hits. And he misses. That's a good hit. It's for 30. All right. Quailodon's going to go. Seeing that Galtier's already down, he's going to go at the three standing right there to finish them off. And he's going to go at Arlo first. That hits. Arlo, you take... Still have, I still have my shield right until my turn. Yep. Oh. Till start of his turn. Oh, his... Yeah, yep. Yeah, I did. So you take 22 points of piercing damage and 10 points of acid damage. Next is Grayson. That hits with a 30. You take 15 points of slashing damage. And Blaylock. You're still up, right, Blaylock? Yeah, because he missed the other one. Yeah. So you're still a threat. Uh, he hits. <laughs> right. For 13 points of slashing damage. Okay, I'm down. Nope, oh, nope, I had temporary hit points. That's right. Okay, thank you. All right, Arlo, you are up. All right, I'm going to do uh, Fighting Spirits. And I got it. 18, Dirty Miss. 20, Miss. and a Nat 20. Okay. Okay, so that is... Maximum damage and roll the damage dice again. But I don't take the modifier, correct? Right. On the roll? On the first one, yes, but when you roll the second one, no. Okay, so there's 15. 25. Okay. We'll roll to 10. And I'm done. All right, Galtier. You are stable and on the ground. Blaylock. I can't do it. Wait, I can't do it. I can't do anything, right? Blaylock, death saving throw. No. He's not down. You're just a Oh, he's not down. Blaylock, go for it. Sorry. Playlock. Playlock. About now. Can you hear me <laughs> now? Yes. Ah, wonderful. Okay, what do you, I can't hear you now. How about now? There you go. Ah, okay. That's how technology works. Um, uh, I see Galtier down. He's laying on the ground, yes. Shoot, okay. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, I'm going to come over there and um, up behind him. And how many spell slots did you use? Oh, he was using them. Like they were going on I always get yelled at that yeah. I don't play characters correctly. 
No, you did fine. Uh, <laughs> what do I still have for spell storing? Do I still have the, the boots of heels kicking? I've, I've kicked twice, yeah, so he, whatever. He was using it. Okay, well, I'm going to kick again. Okay. So, so we got that plus five on Galtier. I'm just going to go ahead and give him a good boot. 16, uh, I'm just going to heal for 16. All right. Thanks. Okay. And then the turret is going to pulse. And everyone gets six temporary hit points. Remember, they don't stack. They take over. And Quelodon hits you with his tail for 16 points of damage. And I am down. Okay. Grayson, you are up. First attack. Uh, 21. Miss. Second attack. Right, remember what? No. I'm going to use this. So that was 21. I'm going to use Slater Die. 22. Oh, you got only a one on it? That hits. Yeah. Hey. It, it made the difference. It made the difference. Mm hmm. For 15 damage. Okay. Second attack. Natural 19. Okay. Nice. Quadruple damage, and the target must make a DC 16 constitution saving throw. On a failed save, the target can make three fewer attacks on the next turn. Is it too late to use a reaction? <laughs> his, his con is, uh, yeah, he's good. <laughs> Okay, quadruple damage. Is, is it too late to use the reaction? You know, I'm laying on the ground. Yes. Oh, man. So many of those. Thirty-six damage. All right. And because I crit, I get another attack. To do last time. That is a twenty-three to attack for another 14 damage. All right. Zormir, you are up. Wait, this guy's still fucking up. 24 to hit. That hits. Oh, plus. From there, thirty-nine points of damage. How would you like to do it? Oh, thank God! It would be fitting for him to do it. Yeah, I, I know. Like I'm watching the hit points tick down. I'm like, no, no, this isn't gonna happen like this. This isn't fabricated. No, absolutely not. How many hit points was, did he have left was... after Grayson? <laughs> I was gonna say it was either meant for Grayson to do it. To do it. No, no, it, it, it was, he had uh, 25 hit points left after uh, Grayson. Wow. Mm. Perfect timing. All right. I'm going to kind of, I'm going to whisper to him. Sorry, he had to be this way. We work together well. Even if you're evil inside. And I'm going to run up to him, jump onto his back, run up his spine and neck to his head, and plunge my rapier down into his skull. Betrayal. I gave you everything. Now you have taken it from me. What be like the weird uncle? And as you run up his tail and you just kind of dragging your blade along his back. You see the, the flesh split open in the translucent ghost-like form. It, it keeps cracking, and you plunge your rapier down into his skull. And as you do, you see the light behind his eyes begin to glow, and the head bursts in a, in a large fashion. <laughs> you all are temporarily blinded, and you see Zormir falling from on high arms flailing in the air 
Well, yeah. Well, you, yeah. <laughs> it's not that uh -huh. kind of blinded, but like a flash of light. And he's falling through the air, and you hear him land on the sand. And as he gets up on his knees and looks toward you, you see the hole in the center of his chest. You can see through it. The sand on the other side. The blackness creeping around it. And that's where we're going to end tonight. What? No. No, 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 no. <laughs> that's where we're going to stop. No. <laughs> and we're not... Uh, we're not here oh, next no. week. Sorry, I got to travel for work. So exactly. I'm, two weeks. I, I, it'll be uh, two weeks. Zormir is there. He's got a hole in his chest. That's where um, we're leaving. Hey, this I didn't plan cool. it for this way. You guys spent this forever cool. trying to do traps or whatever the freaking fort. So, um... <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Every good idea that we come up with gets kicked aside by the DM. I, it's, <laughs> it's sand. Sure. Okay. <laughs> You'll think they like this is their job. You'll think they already do this stuff. <laughs> like they understand they understand um yeah so you'll have to tune in in two weeks <laughs> half ass is not happy tricky's not happy um what is the fate of zormir and blaylock blaylock's down as well um you'll have to find out in two weeks i'm sorry so ah uh, hey, well, thank you shout out to you guys you guys saved our ass <laughs> yeah oh those shields so uh Ten hit points helped for a short time so uh thank you all for coming by we really appreciate it uh god we're almost there we're at 99 followers we've almost broke that 100 so thanks for those that came along with that the subs coming in we appreciate nice. that uh, and all the bits and uh people sticking around tricky and and half ass make sure to check out half ass on uh youtube for the best beer reviews on the internet and uh, Fanboy Tone always helping moderate and uh, check them out in Banter and Babble. They're back this week as well on Wednesday at uh, 9 p.m. So check them out. And never forget the immortal King Cuddles, who streams about every day. A lot of New World here recently, but he's got a lot of stuff. And Captain Cronesy and all those. So uh, thanks for all stopping by. And we'll see you in two weeks to find out the fate of Zoromir. Ant House, can you play us out?